this video I'll be explaining this pulse motor and circuit. Before we get started, I want to share something I experienced the other night. I was able to get this motor to run at a very slow rate, like the tick-tock of a grandfather clock. And I'll show you how I did that. So I left the motor run for about a half an hour, and then I shut it off. And I was outside later that night, and I heard this beeping noise. And I didn't think too much of it. Day later, I'm outside, and I hear this noise again. And I'm wondering where's that noise coming from. So I started looking around and trying to find it. And I got next to the telephone pole that I have a street light on. That's where it was coming from. And I bumped the pole, and the oscillation stopped. So evidently this motor running was able to start an oscillation in a telephone pole in the mains 40 feet away. I took this motor apart so I could fix the magnets being loose in the flywheel. It was a bit of a novelty to mimic the sound of an engine but it took away from the performance moving around in the flywheel. So the coil that I have on here is a bifiler coil. There are eight layers I think I have on there. All told there's 1,280 turns. That's 640 each wire. So the coil has some capacitance to it. I could have put more turns on there if I wanted to. I just decided to stop there. There's been some debate over whether the bifiler coil has a stronger magnetic field than the single wire coil. And first we have to look at how we're measuring the field. The permanent magnet, you measure the lines of flux with a gauss meter. And those lines are confined primarily to the surface of the magnet. They don't extend out to any great distance. And when you're talking about an electromagnet, you got field lines that are extending, covering a larger spatial footprint than a permanent magnet does. And we're changing the field with an alternating pulses you can imagine a counter-spatial bubble in the core that's expanding and contracting as it covers that larger spatial footprint. That expansion and contraction has inertia itself. And the bifiler coil doesn't impede that change like a single wire does. Now, depending on how you use the bifiler coil, there's an energy conversion that's different than a single wire. If you use it in a certain way, there's an extra current that goes towards creating that field strength, which I'll show you in the circuit diagram. I wanted to see how slow I could get this motor running. And it's running about two or three pulses a second, which is 120 or 180 RPM. The meter is going a little haywire with these pulses. I had a analog meter on there and voltmeter. The volts are right, 0.9 volts and it's 40 milliamps. The circuit that I'm using is the one I showed before with that patent. Using two NPN transistors. These ones are 2N3904. So just using the bifiler coil 
That's 30 gauge that I use, 30 AWG. And it's using it the way Tesla showed in his patent. Well, he didn't exactly say how to connect it up. But using the center tap, to pulsing through each half of the coil. And here's where we get to the part about the impedance. It's been questioning whether or not there's impedance in this coil. Each one of these wires is 11 ohms of resistance. When you add this capacitor here, you get something different that happens. There's an extra current. When, when one half of the coil pulses, there's an extra current in the other half of the coil. And that goes towards producing the magnetic field. When I disconnect this cap, this motor stops running. And you'll hear why. Because of these LEDs in the AC configur configuration that I use for testing these circuits. That's a handy tool for looking at these circuits. So each wire being 11 ohms, you treat the coil as a whole. It's 22 ohms resistance. Yes, there is impedance, but the energy you're putting into it is going towards the magnetic field with the extra current that's going through the other half of the coil. Makes a big difference with that cap. And thanks for that suggestion. You know who you are. So if I disconnect this capacitor from the circuit, the motor stops. It's got no magnetic force enough to move those magnets. And you can see I have them LEDs there. And you got an AC oscillation in that other half. So there is an extra current in that other half. Now if I turn up the power here. I can get that one. LED to blink with the capacitor in. And this is where you hear that pulsing noise in uh, pulse motors, that extra sound, which I think is kind of an arcing over of the transistors. When I disconnect the cap, you got that beeping back. coming from the coil. You can see now that you got an AC current happening in one half. That capacitor eliminates that AC from the one side and turns it into usable energy so the power going in is converted directly to magnetism. Back in and smooths it out. 